Chapter Thirteen of Dynamic Thought or The Law of Vibrant Energy by William Walker Atkinson. Chapter Thirteen The Riddle of the Sphinx. It is with no light emotion or jaunty air that the writer approaches this part of his subject. On the contrary, he feels something like awe when he contemplates the nature of that great something which he is called upon to attempt to explain in a few pages he feels in only a lighter degree the emotion that one experiences when in occasional moments his mind leads to a contemplation of the infinite he feels that which men mean when they say gravitation and the ether are but symbols and feeble concepts of something so far above human experience that the mind of man may grasp only its lowest shadings the greater and higher part of it like the higher rays of the spectrum being hidden from the experience of man in his endeavour to pass on to you his ideas regarding the something that explains both gravitation and the ether he must ask you to endeavour to form a mental picture of a something this something must fill all space within the limits of the universe or cosmos if limits it has it must be an expression of the first of the attributes of the infinite the one called omnipresence or presence everywhere and yet it must not be the infinite presence it also must be an expression of the second of the attributes of the infinite the one called omnipotence or all power and yet it must not be the infinite power it also must be an expression of the third attribute of the infinite it's the one called omniscience or all-knowing and yet it must not be the infinite wisdom it must be an expression of all the attributes that we think of as belonging to the infinite and yet through them all we may see the infinite itself in the backgrounds viewing its expressions the something that you are asked to think of is that something regarding which the mystics have dreamed the philosophers have speculated the scientists have sneered and smiled that something that men have thought of as the universal mind or the cosmic mind you are asked to think of this something as a great ocean of pure mind permeating all space between solar systems between worlds between masses of substance between the molecules atoms and corpuscles in and about and around everything yes even in everything in the very essence of the corpuscle it is in truth it is that essence itself bound up in the bosom of that mighty ocean of mind must reside all knowledge of the universe of all this side of god for that all knowledge is but a knowing of its own region latent within itself must be locked up all energy all capacity for force or motion for all force or energy is mental in its presence it exemplifies the capacity of filling all space omnipresent omnipotent omniscient all the attributes of the infinite are manifested in it and yet it is but the outward expression of that behind the veil which is the causeless cause of all in that great ocean of universal or cosmic mind bodies of substance are but as floating specks of dust or even bubbles formed of the substance of that ocean itself on the surface of that ocean there may arise waves currents ripples eddies whirlpools storms hurricanes tempests from its bosom may rise vapour that after stage of clouds raindrops flowing in streams rivers bays at last again reach the source of its origin these substances are changes we call energy force motion but they are but surface manifestations and the great ocean is serene in its depths and in reality is unchanged and undisturbed this friends is that which the writer asks you to accept in the place of aristotle's ether 
is it a worthy exchange we have seen that the attraction of gravitation was different from any other so-called form of force and energy both in its operations and laws as well as in its constancy and self-support and that it was different from the other forms of attraction such as cohesion chemical affinity etc and so we must consider it as more than a mere emotional excitement in the mind of the particle that bubble on the surface of the ocean and it must be different from the special forms of attraction manifested by the atom and molecule it must be a simpler more basic and yet a more constant and permanent thing it must exist before and after excitement vibration cohesion and chemical affinity it must be the mother of the forces let us imagine the cosmic mind as a great body of something filling space instead of as the surface of the ocean which figure we used just now either figure is equally correct this great cosmic mind is to be thought of as a filling space and containing within its volume oh for a better word countless worlds and suns as well as smaller bodies of substance these suns and world and bodies are apparently free and unconnected floating in this great volume of mind but they are not free and unconnected they are linked together by a web of lines of gravitation each body of substance has a line reaching out in a continuous direction and connecting it with another body each body has one of such lines connecting it with each particular other body consequently each body has countless lines reaching out from it some slender and some thick the thickness depending upon the ratio of distances maintained by and relative sizes of the particular bodies that it connects this system of lines form a great network of connections in the volume of mind crossing each other at countless points but not interfering with each other and although the number may be said to be countless still these lines do not begin to cover the entire dimensions of space or of the mind that fills it there are great areas of space entirely untouched by these lines if one could see the system of lines it probably would appear as a sheared off section of a great spider's web with lines in all directions but with plenty of room between the lines perhaps these lines converge to a common centre and that centre may be but this is transcendental dreaming let us proceed with our consideration of the use of these lines it is to be understood of course that these lines are not material lines not made of substance but rather conditions in the cosmic mind not thought waves arising from the excitement of particles but something more basic simpler and more permanent let us look closer and we shall see the great lines of gravitation radiating from and connecting world with world sun with planet are really cables composed of much smaller lines the finest strands of which are seen to emanate from each corpuscle or particle of substance the line of gravitation reaching from the earth to the sun being composed of a mass of tiny strands which connect each particle of one body with each particle of the other the last analysis shows us that each particle is connected with every other particle in the universe by a line of attraction these lines of attraction are what we call gravitation purely mental in nature lines of mind principle in the great volume of mind these lines of gravitation must have existed from the creation of the particle and the connection between particle and particles must have existed from the beginning beginning there was the particles may have changed their positions and relations in the universe but the lines have never been broken whether the particle existed as a free corpuscle whether combined as atom or molecule whether part of this world or sun or planet 
or that one countless millions of miles removed it mattered not the line of gravitation always was there between that particle and every other particle distance extended and thinned the line or the reverse as the case might be but it was there always obstacles proved no hindrance to passage for the lines pass through the obstacle can it not be seen that here is the secret of the fact that no time is required for the passage of gravitation it apparently travelling instantaneously whereas in fact it does not travel at all and does not seem that this theory also explains why no medium is required for the travel of gravitation and does it not explain why gravitation is not affected in its passage by intervening bodies gravitation does not travel or pass it remains constant and ever present between the articles varying in degree as the distance between the particles is increased and vice versa and increasing and decreasing in effect according to the number of particles combining their lines of attraction as in the case of atom molecule mass world gravitation is a mental connection or bond united the mind in the several particles rather than their substance or material along these lines of gravitation pass the thought waves resulting from the excitement of the particles these fleeting changing inconstant waves of emotion how different they are from the changeless constant exhibition of gravitation and among these same lines when shortened by close contact travel the impulses of cohesion and chemical affinity gravitation not only performs its own work but also acts as a common carrier for the waves of desire force and the thought waves of excitement of the particles manifesting as attractive energy and radiant energy respectively the writer asks you to remember particularly that while the desire waves of the particles and their thought waves of excitement are changeable disconnected and inconstant the line of gravitation is never broken and could not be unless the particle of substance was swept out of existence in which case the balance of the universe would be overturned and chaos would result the divine plan is perfect to the finest detail every particle is needed is known is counted and used in the plan and gravitation is the plainest evidence of the reality of the infinite that is afforded us in it we see the actual machinery of the infinite no wonder that great thinkers have bowed their heads reverently before its power and awfulness when the minds have finally grasped its import verily the sparrow's fall is noted and known as the biblical writer has recorded for the fall is in obedience to that great law that holds the particles in their places that makes possible the whirl of worlds and the existence of solar systems that indeed makes possible the forms of life as we know them that something that forever and ever has and will silently ceaselessly untiringly and without emotion fulfilled its work and destiny gravitation the theory of dynamic thought also holds that in addition to the existence of the cosmic mind or ocean of the mind principle and the lines of attraction that run through it each particle has its mental atmosphere or aura the aura is an atmosphere of mind that surrounds the particle and also the larger bodies and also living forms higher in the scale this aura is merely an extension of the bit of mind that is segregated or apparently separated from the cosmic mind for use by the individual particle mass or creature through and by means of this aura the particle takes cognizance of the approach and nature of the other particles in its vicinity the same rule holds good in the case of the creatures including man as we shall see in a later chapter the fact is mentioned here 
merely in order to connect the several manifestation of mental phenomena mentioned in the several parts of this book some may object to the theory of the lines of gravitation being the only carriers of the energy of the sun as being contrary to the conception of science that the sun radiates energy in all directions equally just as does a piece of hot iron or a lamp answering this objection the writer would say that there is a decided difference in the two cases the iron or lamp radiates its heat and light to the particles of the surrounding air and other substance in close distance the lines being very close together so close in fact that they seem to be continuous and having no space between them at least no space sufficiently large to be detected by the eye of man or his instruments but with the sun the case is different for the distances are greater and the lines spread apart as the distance is increased draw a diagram of many fine x-rays emanating from a central point and you will have the idea at once if space were filled with substance just as is the atmosphere of the earth the air is meant of course then indeed would the lines practically be joined together but as space between the worlds is almost devoid of substance the lines between the sun and the other worlds and planets spread out rapidly as the distance from the sun increases to show how this objection is really an additional proof of the theory the writer begs to call your attention to the fact that according to the calculations of the physicists in science the sun's energy would have been exhausted in twenty million years granting that it was dispersed equally in all directions during that time but note this science in its other branches namely in geology etc holds that the sun already has been throwing out energy for five hundred million years or more five hundred million or more years and seems able to stand the strain for many millions of years more thus science is arrayed against science does not this theory harmonize the two by showing that the sun does not emanate energy in all directions equally and at all times but on the contrary radiates energy only along the lines of gravitation and in proportion to the relative distances and sizes of the bodies to whom such energy is radiated the writer need scarcely state that in the short space at his disposal in the pages of this book he has been able merely to outline his theory of dynamic force as applied to the inorganic world the patience of the average reader has limits we must pass on to other features of the workings of the theory namely the mental life of man in which the name laws are manifested but he feels that those interested in the phases of the subject touched upon may explain for themselves the missing details by reference to the teachings of modern science on the subjects of physics remembering always to substitute the theory of dynamic thought for the ether theory that modern science borrows from aristotle as a temporary makeshift the writer believes that this theory will account for many of the missing links in physics a broad statement he knows and one either extremely impudent or superbly confident according to the viewpoint of the critic the writer may be able to throw a little additional light probably upon the question of the relation between gravitation and the excitement waves of radiant energy without attempting to go into details he wishes to suggest that in view of the fact that the particles are connected by the lines of gravitation any great extended and rapid disturbance of a number of particles would cause a series of undulating wave-like movements in the lines which might be spoken of as waves of agitation or unrest in the lines of gravitation this agitation or unrest of course would be thus communicated to all other particles toward whom lines extended the intensity 
or effect of such agitation or unrest depending upon the relative distances and the number of particles involved we may easily imagine how the intense and high rate of vibration among the particles of the sun manifesting as intense heat will cause a like high degree of agitation or unrest among the lines of gravitation the lines dancing backward and forward around and about following the movements of the particles and thus producing waves of gravitational agitation and unrest which when communicated to the particles of the earth would produce a similar excitement among the particles of the latter in the same way the sun-spots and consequent terrestrial electrical disturbance may be explained by not absolutely trying himself to this particular conception of the details of the workings of the law the writer feels free to say that he considers it a very reasonable idea and one that in all probability will be found to come nearer to explaining the phenomena than any other hypothesis it certainly coincides with the undulatory wave theory of science the idea is but crudely expressed here for lack of space it being impossible to attempt to go into details the mere mention of general principles being all that is possible at this time and space and now for a few additional words on the subject of our theory that in place of the hypothetical ether of science a substance that is not substance there exists a great ocean of cosmic mind the idea is not without corroborative proof in the direction of the thought of advanced thinkers even among the ranks of science while science has accustomed the public to the idea that in the universal ether might be found the origin of matter the essence of energy the secret of motion it has not spoken of mind in connection with this universal something but the idea is not altogether new and some daring scientific thinkers have placed themselves on record regarding the same let us quote from a few of them it will make smoother our path edward drinker cope and several of his writings hinted at the idea that the basis of life and consciousness lay back of the atoms and might be found in the universal ether dolbia says possibly the ether may be the medium through which mind and matter react hemstreet says mind in the ether is no more unnatural than mind in flesh and blood stockwell says the ether is coming to be apprehended as an immaterial superphysical substance filling all space carrying in its infinite throbbing bosom the specks of aggregated dynamic force called worlds it embodies the ultimate spiritual principle and represents the unity of those forces and energies from which spring as their source all phenomena physical mental and spiritual as they are known to man dolby speaks of the ether as a substance which besides the function of energy and motion has other inherent properties out of which could emerge under proper circumstances other phenomena such as life or mind or whatever may be in the substratum newton spoke of it as a subtle spirit or immaterial substance dolby says the ether the properties of which we vainly strive to interpret in the terms of matter the undiscovered properties of which ought to warn every one against the danger of strongly asserting what is possible and what is impossible in the nature of things stockwell says that the ether is not matter in any of its forms practical scientists are agreed scientists are agreed dalbier again says if the ether that fills all space is not atomic in structure presents no friction to bodies moving through it and is not subject to the law of gravitation it does not seem proper to call it matter one might speak of it as a substance if he wants another name for it as for myself i make a sharp distinction between the ether and matter and feel somewhat confused to hear one speak of the ether as matter and yet in spite of the above expressions no scientist has dared to say 
in plain words that the ether or whatever took the place of the ether must be mined although several seemed to be on the verge of the declaration but apparently afraid to voice their thought in view of what we have seen in our consideration of the facts and principles advanced in this chapter we are invited to consider the following two supplemental propositions supplemental proposition three connecting each particle of substance with each and every other particle of substance there exist lines of mental connection the thickness of which depends upon the distance between the two particles decreasing in proportion as the distance is increased these lines may be considered as conditions of the great ocean of cosmic mind which pervades and fills all space including the essence of inner being of the particles of substance as well as the space between the said particles these lines are the lines of gravitation by and over which the phenomenon of gravitation is manifested these lines of gravitation have always existed between each particle and every other particle and have persisted continuously and constantly throughout all the changes of condition and position and relation that the particles have undergone there is no passage or transmission of energy or force of gravitation over these lines or any other channel but on the contrary the energy or force of gravitation is a constant and continuous mental connection or bond existing between the mind of the particles rather than between their substance or material supplemental proposition four the lines of gravitation mentioned in the preceding proposition are the medium over which travel or are transmitted the thought waves resulting from the excitement of the particles and by which waves the mental states are communicated or transmitted the same medium transmits or carries the mental force of attraction cohesion chemical affinity etc evidencing the relation of the particles to each other thus gravitation not only performs its own work but also acts as a common carrier for the waves of excitement manifesting as radiant energy and the waves of desire force manifesting as attractive energy and here the writer rests his case in the action in the forum of advanced thought entitled the theory of dynamic thought versus the theory of aristotle's ether in which he appears for the plaintiff he begs that you the members of the jury will give to the evidence and argument due consideration to the end that you may render a just verdict end of chapter thirteen